Great evening today and all that nice stuff. We got a lot to talk about. Um, I'll try not to scream or yell or shout. I'll try my best. Can everyone hear me quite well? I got a lot of information to share with you all. A lot of information here. Everything's information, okay? This is of national concern. This is not this is not we're not dealing with politics, we're doing national concern. That's what it's all about. And I'm doing this live, not only to try to save an asset that belongs to us, but I'm also doing it in memory of my cousin, who was the first Trinbagonian to be named Managing Director of Trinma. He died about uh, six, four, three years ago, Mr. Kenneth Birchwood. Great man, lovely man, very humble guy. And you know, you know what? He never wanted anything. He always keep his head down. So for him, yes, I'll do this for him, right? And he also helped me, taught me to play chess because we all, all love to play chess, right? So you have to know about strategy. And that's why in one post I said, there's something called financial knowledge and there's financial intelligence. It's two different things. You have to understand, you could have the knowledge to do, to, of a, a subject, but you have to need the intelligence to decode that subject, break it down, and make your own and make your own and make it new or make a, have a new idea and a new concept. And what I've been telling everyone over and over again, our education system do not support clear dynamic thinking or what everyone likes to use over and over critical thinking. You do not get dynamic thinking or out of the box thinking by rote and memorization. You'll never see a part to learn to speak English, understand what English is. That's the whole thing. That's what we're doing. We're absorbing information. And instead of us taking this information and break it down or, or have the cue or the clue to break it down and then build it up back in our own image, what we do is that we spit it back out, not understanding what it is. And that is our, our education failure. Every other country that's, that's progressive and is successful Yes, they may have, they may regurgitate the information, but at the same time, they're always thinkers, think, thinkers and thinkers who always take information and they bend it, they break it, and they remold it to suit themselves. And this is what happened. And that comes with your, with your thought process and your ideas having a vision. Every single thing you have around you that's man-made was someone's idea that became a vision and, be, and became concrete and something you can grab and hold and look at and see is our someone's idea. And this is what we have to start thinking in, in that way and stop following follow fashion and allow people who are in charge, who behave like dictators, to dictate for us what we must and mustn't do. And this is what happened. Anyhow, I'll, go, I'll, go, I'll talk more about that, about education system. And that's what's killing us right now. Our education system is killing us because we have, we have people who have degrees and they are functionally illiterate. And that is why we are where we are. Because we often think that because they have a degree that they're smarter than us, and they're not. They're not smarter than us, they have issues. Because they do not know how to be coherent and, and be clear-headed and to make a, an idea clear. That's an issue we have. Anyhow, dig this. 
So we're going, so it's about Petro Train, all right? And uh, we're talking about the chairman of the boards and all the interlocking directorship. Listen to this. So there's a connection between the Petro Train board and the new company, Nikon and Associates. Are you guys aware of that? Are you guys aware that right now, some of the members of the board is on a, is on a second go around to steal, more, to steal more money and to steal our patch money? They did the first go along with World GTL. And World GTL was a failed gas and liquids um, program, I mean project that they, that they did. World G GTL was based on a, on a false premise that they could take gas and liquefy it and make it, more make it more valuable. That's what, that's what it was. But they didn't understand the technical nature of what it took to do that. So what they did, they, they put together, is a, you have a charlatan who came in, the back man who came in, uh, convinced Malcolm Jones was the chairman at the time that he's going to fund all this. So, and then what, what the end story was, they, they took used equipment from, Mex from a Mexican oil refinery and just to stick it in there. Bottom line, we end up with $3 billion that, that's, on the, that's on the sheet. It, that's on the accounting sheet. So Petrotrain has about $12 billion in losses. $3 billion of that was from, was from that failed world GTL plant. Dig this. So now, here we go. Now we have this guy called Ainsley Gill and Associates. Ainsley Gill and Associates was, was, a, was a guy for a company based in Washington, D.C. He's the one that formed a new company called Nikon Energy that bought, that bought out the assets of World GTL. So we lost $3 billion in it. Our money lost $3 billion in it. And this guy, Ainsley Gill, got the, the sold thing for $30 million. Here's the connection. Let's start. He was, he was also, this Ainsley Gill guy, right, for the governor of Trinidad Tobago. He was a lobbyist for the governor of Trinidad Tobago from 2004. We paid him at $1.5 million to be a U.S. lobbyist. And we paid him in 2009, this same Ainsley Gill, $4 million U.S. dollars to be a lobbyist for the Trinidad Tobago government to foster great ties between United States and Trinidad. Bunch of, a bunch of crap. He listened to this click carefully. So in all, so initially he got he, he got four he got 1.5 million US dollars from us in 2004 under the PM government. Under the PM government again, he got four million dollars. He got again from us. So that's 5.5 million dollars. And now he bought he bought an asset, this world GTL asset that's on the Petrotrain balance book as a negative, right? He got for 30 million dollars that we had put out $3 billion. Now, remember her? She was, in the, she, was, she was head of the board, the Port Authority board. Well, guess what? She and Wilfred Espinin, right, was on the same board with, with TCL and some other boards before. Both of them is lockstep to each other. And she's the one with the whole thing with the Bridgman, with the Bridgman and the Sea Bridge and the failed Sea Bridge. Well, guess what? She's on the board. Wilfred of Wilfred Espiné, the chairman of the, of, of the board. He's on the board of Nikon Energy. He's the chairman, he's the chairman of the board of Petrotrin. But he's also on the board of Nikon Energy, which bought the failed World GTL assets for $30 million. And that $3 billion that we have spent on that is on the balance book for Petrotrin. Now we start seeing the connection. Now he starts seeing the connection. He also owns a company called Aero Marine. And our oil and carry to Texas in order to get it refined. That's what the deal is. So, so it's a lot of stuff going on, go, going on. That's what they said. It has been alleged. I don't know. That's what they say. It has been alleged. Right? So Aero Marine, let's check it out. He's the same one that's on the board of TCL that sent home, the, that sent home a lot of their workers the day before yesterday also. So it's like he's, go, he's going through a fire sale. This is what happened. So now we have Alison Lewis, retired from the Port Authority. She's also on the board of Nikon Energy, right? Right? The new, the new company. Okay. Here we go. Anthony Chantak is on the board, was on the, was on the board of, of, of World GTL, that same field company 
which has stole three billion dollars of our money, is now on the board of Petrochin. So in other words, it's like a second go around. You know what? I screw you guys for three billion dollars. That's what I'm gonna do. I screw you guys good for three billion dollars. And guess what? I'm coming back instead. I don't want three billion dollars. I want the whole hub. So what did they shut down the refinery? This same bastard, second time around, second time around, they stole, they stole the money. So $3 billion was not enough. No, you know what? Now I need more money. So now on the second time around, that same, that same uh, Rowley, that prime minister, piece of crap prime minister, put a point him again on the second time on the Petrochim board to, 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 to destroy, to, to destroy Petrochim. That's what this bastard is, is doing. Now you guys start to see the connection now, okay? And now on the, on the board also is David Small. He's the director of policy and all that nice stuff for the government, uh, for the gas from between 2001, 2002. And he had created the gas master plan. And he's now group vice president of Nikon Energy. So it's like Nikon Energy and interlocking direct, directorship between the failed world G GTL that cost us $3 billion, the directorship of Petrotrin, which are closing down now, and also, and also the new company, Nikon Energy. All the connections, they started to see the connections. Robert Riley, was a, he's also a director um, on Petrotrin. He's also, he was a director of Massey. Between 17 and 17 December 2014 and March 26, 2018. Now he started to put all these things together. You kind of have an idea exactly what the hell is happening? So, so this is a deliberate um, attack on Petrotrain. That's what these bastards did. They didn't care to negotiate. 2016, we have had Oppenheimer um, spoke to Petrotrain. They spoke to them. And in um, and 2017, other, the bondholders had spoken to them and asked them, I said, listen, we are willing to negotiate the bond. We are, we are willing to negotiate the bond. 2016, 2017. Now, I, I'm, I'm, I am not Turner. That's what an ab abolitionist in the United States. Um, Somebody give me this shit. Anyhow, right? Yeah, because, because I don't like sell-out bastards. That, that's what it is. And what is a sell-out bastard? That's what it is. Straight sell-out bastard. If you hate your damn self, look, go get some bleach, put over your skin, and resign from being a prime minister. But don't screw everybody, the whole country, as part of it. Going back to, um, going back to what I was saying. So 2016, the bondholders, bondholders, because the government was sending signals that they're not going to support the bond, they're not going to do it with the bond, even though when the bond was taken, up, taken out under Malcolm Jones at the time, whoever had, whoever had, had done the negotiation for the bond was a stupid fool. Nobody will put, an, will put a bond with a good credit rating for 9.75%. Average bonds go to between 2.4% to 4.8%. On that exact, that exact credit rating. And we had a great credit rating back then. And somebody went and negotiated behind the scene and decided to give us a nasty bond with a high interest rate at 9.75%. So this is what we're saddled with. So the $850 million is due in, due in 2019. So that's, just, that's the first screw up, and nobody's talking about it. Who the hell went and took, decided to make, to bad negotiate, and to sell our bond at 9.75% at the time when they had excellent credit rating? Right? We're going to find that out because that's, that's theft. So anyhow, so we, have, so we started with that bond. The bondholders are saying, okay, you know what? Listen, it looks like the $850 million is kind of tough and it, and it won't do it. Let's we ne renegotiate the bond. That's normal. People, they renegotiate the bond. Over, that's normal. Puerto Rico, over, uh, Puerto Rico renegotiated their bond. Kazakh, a country, they renegotiated their bond. A whole bunch of countries renegotiated their bond. Greece renegotiated their bond. And it's not as if to say we wasn't going to pay them at all. All we're saying is that let's renegotiate. The, and the bondholders were interested because they already knew that it's going to make a lot of money, which is almost like 500% over the average bond. 
So there, so that there was wiggle room, lots of wiggle room. And all they had to do is to go to the bond and say, you know what? Here's what. Let's negotiate. This, this is what, we, this, this what we, we, we're going to do. Right? We can do a debt, a debt to equity swap. And then what happens? You can, you can take some un, a little bit of un, in, um, unsecured money, stick it in to better train, right? In order to boost up some of some of the units that's not working, like the ultra low so, like the ultra low diesel um, system that they have there right now, is 98% completed. We only claim that it was built on a, on a faulty foundation. He said he think he needs seven billion dollars to fix it. He's a liar, right? It's, it only needs 230 million US dollars to fix it. You could, you could call that in, show them that hey, here's what, we need this, uh, this amount of capital in order to fix this ultra low, ultra low diesel um, plant so we, could sell, so we could sell more diesel into the wide open market and create a whole marketable plan behind the whole thing. And they'd have gone for it because that would have been more revenue. They, would have, they wouldn't mind because what we do is what we do when we negotiate the bonds is two ways use time. Or you could use it, the interest rate. You can do that. Or what you can do, you can do a debt. To, you can do an, an equity to debt mix, meaning that I, in, in exchange for me giving you back some of that money, so you can so you can get it, build your assets. I am willing to get like let's say 10, 15 percent of your of your of, of the equity that you have in the plant. And what I do, I'll hold it for like seven, eight years. And in, and, but for that money I give you as a side money. I'm, a, I'm willing to take on 9 to 10 to 15% extra per year, right? You can do all that. There are many ways to do, to do this. Or you can make a call with bonds. But they never did it. So they asked the government, let's talk and we negotiate. The government refused. They refused to talk to the bondholders. They refused to talk to the bondholders. So what happened was that because of the refusal and because they keep putting out, out there, how they can, how the can can't take care of itself and can't do this and can't do that and that cash injection. What that does is send jitters through the bond market. Now a bond is nothing more than a loan, and let let don't let those other financial experts try to get things twisted for you folks and make it seem more than what it is. It's not. A bond is nothing more than a loan. Think of a think of a loan with shares in it, meaning that the person who, who invests in that loan or who give you the money. They have shares in, into that loan. It's not, that's, that's all it is, nothing more than that. So a bond is nothing more, is nothing more than a loan with shares. So what happens is that anytime you send out, you send jitters out in the market that you know what, we can't pay the loan back, we can't do this back, or we can't pay that bond back, what it does is that it increases the yield, and the yield is how much you'll pay for that loan versus how much you expect to get back. So what happens is that the, cost, the, 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 the face of the bond itself, the cost of it gets lowered. So instead of everybody paying, let's say, um, $100 million for $800 million worth of, worth of bonds, they will say, you know what, I'll pay $50 million instead. So that difference in price is what they call a yield, and the yield is what increases. That's all it is, nothing more than that. So stop. So everybody needs to stop having all these idiot financial experts. And this is what... And this is what I'm talking about when I talk about bonds and, how, and what they did. So what they did, they deliberately tank the bonds so they make it worthless and bring on the credit rating. But they don't care because the idea is that if you bring the credit rating down, down then therefore nobody else can go behind you and borrow, money, and borrow money for that facility unless you have hard cash on hand. So whoever they have lined up have hard cash on hand to restart the facility. And all the, all, all the bondholders are asking for, all the ones are injection of funds. They're talking about $2 billion needed to shut down Petro Train. Take that same $2 billion and, and use it as an injection. And let the bondholders see that. So when they see that now, then the cost of the bond is going to rise because they're going to see stability. And when they see that now, then what's going to happen now, then, they, then, they, then you can renegotiate and lower that 9.75% interest, maybe down to 5% interest. That is how you do business. But... Growly, growly, right, scumbag, ultimate scumbag, right, apparently don't know or don't care because as far as it's concerned, you screen everybody up. And people don't understand that you have to have a refining, refining capacity. In the United States right now, there's a huge rush in Southwest Texas and Southeast New Mexico 
on the permian basin there's so much oil pumping out the problem is they don't have enough lines fuel lines going to the refineries in Texas and Louisiana to process all that to process it that's one that's one issue so what's happening is that the refineries are, are at full capacity right now so they find they pick and choose who they, who they want or what they want because they don't care and the cost to put up a refinery and the time to build up a refinery take about three to four years and billions of dollars a lot of people don't want to do that right now just want to send the money through and, ex and export the distillates and export the refined products right now the refineries trying to get venezuela they're using venezuela right now because venezuela crude is sour like ours and they're using it because venezuela can sell their crude for 20 dollars a barrel 22 dollars a barrel 23 dollars a barrel and it won't affect them and then the u.s refiners process that fuel and sell it back to them at market rates so this is what happened for us if we don't have a, if we don't have a refinery then we have to send it to the united states what happened is that they can negotiate to bring our prices even lower and then for the raw crude and then get it processed and then and then hit us back at international rates so your cost of your gasoline your vehicle is going to go up that means the transport cost is going to go up that means your, your goods your, your goods and services will go up the cost of diesel will go up because now it, now it's at international rates and people don't understand that we ourselves produce forty eight thousand barrels of of oil and 22,500 barrels approximately is what we use domestically. And the rest is for bunkering and for other, and for other things, which you can use, which you can use, we can bunker the US of the fuel, our own fuel, because you, you refine it, right? And use that as a leverage or a characteristic to bring larger companies to help diversify our economy and say, you know what? Um, if you're doing some kind of downstream product, but you, with downstream product, which uses our oil, here we can give you a better deal because we have an extra 22,000 barrels um, to spare. That's how you have to think. But they're not thinking like that. All they want to do is to steal everything. So now, so the first go around, they took $3 billion. That wasn't enough. So this second go around, they're going to shut it down and steal all. So all belong to them. And what are they going to do? You're going to sit back and, and allow that to happen? Is that what it is? This is what, this is what they're doing. Instead of the government negotiating, saying, you know what? On a, on a color bond, shave off 25%. Shave off a quarter of what, of, what, of, what, of what we owe. Shave a quarter of what we owe. So that will work up to what, um, almost like 100, $108 million, something like that. Shave it off. Shave it off. We have a longer time span. We're willing to, to hold the interest rate uh, as it is. Uh, as it is. We, we, we don't mind get another injection from you. And if you bump, bump the, the second the second rate a little higher, so you could back investment. That's how we do it. That's how we do it. I saw the um the oil field the oil field um workers plan. It's a good plan, not the greatest, but it's a good plan. It is a good plan, as far as I can see, right? And they talk about how they use them, use up the extra production that we have. We have Trinma has Trinma has three hundred sixty eight wells in production. We also have we also have a four hundred nineteen wells we can reactivate. And that'll give us a 45% boost in our, in our oil production. And then the same thing applies, where we can refine it. Some of it that we can't refine, we send it out to get it refined better and send it back on international rate, which is not too bad. But, the, but the, nobody's addressing how to deal with the bond issue. Because here's what happened. We're doing margins, our margins in terms of how much money you make per barrel of oil when you refine it, is between US $8 and $10 a barrel. So if Petrotrade is making so much raw cash for us for an exchange, why are we getting rid of it? It's nothing more than piss poor management. That's what it is. And every successive government that comes in power brings their own set of managers inside there and they bring all, and, 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 and so they have every, a whole bunch of professional kleptomaniacs that they go inside there and steal more and steal more and steal more and steal more. And yet the last quarter, but Street was able to make $85 million, $85 million, despite all the theft. So what does that tell you? It is it's a management issue. And they're the one who causing the man who causing it because they want it to go down. And SPNA needs to be fired. SPNA needs to be fired a hundred percent because he's not supposed to be on that board. Because of, of his other connections with Nikon Energy, he's not supposed to be on that board. Why is he on that board? 
What about the fact that Unipet, Unipet, a private, a private company, owes owes them, owes Petrotrain five hundred million dollars, and nobody's paying it? Why, why didn't they go after them for their money? Okay, that's another capital injection. Where, what happened to that? Why is nobody asking about that? What about the fake oil scandal? A hundred million dollars. And then we cook back that money, that's six hundred million dollars that they, that, they, that they can inject back into the plant. But they don't want to do that because, because what happened, like I showed you before, you have the board of directors who are deeply involved, who are all involved, who are some of them was in the first go along with a three billion dollar loss and all the second go on to shut everything down. So it's like you're not satisfied with thieving or stealing once, you want to steal for a second time, and this time this is the ultimate bank theft. That, 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 that after this, we control everything and, no, and you have no more. But we're going to go after all these fools because uh, it's, a, it's a lot of stuff, especially Espinay, right? With this Aero, Aero Marine company. I'm going to find out more about this Aero Marine co company that he owns and see if it's a real transport company or not, see what's going on. He's the same one that got with that TCL. And this is Rowley. This sellout bastard, so called black man. You know, black man. He surrounds himself by a whole bunch of people. And all they're doing, they don't look at me. And all they're doing is stealing left, right, and center. Stealing everything left, right, and center. Come on, man. You're supposed to allegedly be a, a black man. And you, you, don't, you can't stand up on your own two feet. Instead, all you're doing is selling everything, everything out to the country. You're selling, you're selling to be able to Sanders. Sanders is a stupid model. Sanders is a model that, 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 that is waning and the decline. That tourism model is no longer in effect. That's an end decline model right now. Within five to six years, that'll be gone. Because of Instagram and everything like that, and the millennials, everybody wants an Instagrammable experience. That crap, that, that cookie cutter, cookie cutter crap, no longer works anymore. And this is what happened. But he's, but he's, willing, to, he's willing to go on the open market and, and get $2 billion in loans to fund a foreign company, Sandals. So I told all the hotelers in Tobago and Trinidad, don't pay any occupancy tax to the government. If they're willing to bring a rival down here and give them free land in order to develop it and everything like that, and give them free reign, and, and there's no foreign exchange trickle down for the local population, don't pay no occupancy tax. Don't give the government none. None. Tell them, get from Sanders. That's what happened. Raul is a full sellout. And I've been saying this over the years. Over the years, I've seen him. I've seen him in action. I said, Raul is a sellout. Raul is a self-hating black man. He hates himself. But because your skin black, okay, so what? So what? My skin black too? Right? But when someone, when someone who's very ignorant about a lot of things and, and, and don't like themselves, this is the kind of action that you get. You get a person in order to, to try to find a sense of identity. He will go along with, with the one who's the, who's the most powerful, and that's what he does, and think he's, he's, a, he's, he's like among them. And that's what we got, and that's what we got. So in, so in this case here, he not, he not, he's not only making himself to be a dictator, but he's also screwing us. And you have to understand, Petrotrain belongs to all of us. It doesn't belong to the OWTO. So everybody's got to stop this crap about the old WTO being the front person for this. It belongs to every one of us. Every one of us, that's our asset. And we supposed to defend that asset. And these bad managers kick their asses out. Kick them all out. And that's what we're having right now. They don't care because they're making all the money. Your cooking gas is going up, is going up because, because they make cooking gas. And that LPG gas that you have in your stove when you're cooking now is going to subject it, subject it to market forces and market rates, international market rates, uh, rates. So now your cooking gas is going to go up. So now, so now it may make sense to eat outside because you can't cook a, a decent meal in your house. That's right. You can't cook. Yes, Mila, I'll get to that. You can't cook a decent meal in your house because your LPG gas is, is, is international market rates. People don't understand. You know, right now, the price of oil is $70 a barrel. Petrotrade, despite all the theft and everything like that, made $85 million in one quarter at oil at $51 a barrel. The oil is now $71 a barrel today. And all they need is one missile strike in Saudi Arabia. And oil prices are going to shoot up to $120 a barrel. What happens then? I don't care about no Guyana and everything like that. Who say about use Guyana? Or Forget about Guyana. We do it our own fields right now. What happens then when oil prices go up $120? 
120 dollars a barrel one missile strike because right now saudi arabia is fighting a war with with, 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 with yemen and it's like a proxy war with iran and uh, iran and saudi arabia so all that gonna happen one missile strike in saudi arabia that's it tomorrow price will go to 120 dollars a barrel you're no longer insulated from that shock. Then all of a sudden tomorrow morning, the price of gas is gonna, is gonna skyrocket. And it kind of up what to pay. And you gotta allow these fools to take, to take this refining from you guys, or they've got to be mad. You better stand up. You better stand up. Stand up to this fool, probably. Okay? I'm coming calling from a nationalistic point of view. This is, this is not political, but it will become political because if the members of the PNM want to be able to real plantation national movement members, right? I'll call them out to on every single one of them. I don't want to talk to them, I want to deal with them right now. Because if I don't find them concerned, you all are sellouts. All you all are sellouts, because you're supporting him. Your brothers put a spoke in his wheel. And I'm telling you, I'm, I'm, you're looking at the trends. And here's another thing too. We just, we just have, not, right now, it's raining right here in Georgia. It's raining right now. So we got the tail end. Can I look up if you're safe in North Carolina? There are more hurricanes coming along, coming along. A lot of the hurricanes often hit the Gulf Coast. The Gulf Coast in the United States is where most of the oil refineries are. What happens? We get a super hurricane and wipe out about a six of the oil refineries in the United States. You know what happens? America said, you know what? It's a national emergency. We can't refine any foreign oil, but they find our domestic oil. For, for, our, for our own security, for our national security. So what's going to happen, the oil we have in Trinidad on a boat or a barge coming to, coming to Texas or, or Louisiana to get refined, all of a sudden they're going to turn back because guess what? They can't refine it. And there's more hurricanes coming, up, coming, coming down the pipeline. What happens then? Then we can't refine, then what happens? I'm, I'm asking, what, what, what happens then? Why is nobody asking these hard questions? That is why we need our damn refinery. Fix it. We got to, and we can fix it, and it's easily fixable. But these bastards don't want to do it because they want to control it. And you have Chief, Chief Rowley, dictator Rowley, and he think that this country is Zambia. Because the people, if we, if we ever deal with a lot of people from Africa, right? From Africa, like East Africa, not West Africa, East Africa. The people from East Africa are more docile. They're very, very docile and very calm, which is, which is okay. But the problem is that, like what happened to Zambia? China came in and, the, and China was giving them nice loans, dangling in front of them. Now the Chinese, the Chinese own the Zambian airport. Now the Chinese own the Zambian broadcasting um, company. So now all the propaganda they're going to get is about, is about China. The third thing they did is that the Zambians, the Zambians end up owning the, the Zambian power company. So now, the population, the population can't do nothing except allow them. And you know why? Because they're so docile, they allow the government to screw them over. And the same thing gonna happen to us if we don't, if we don't st stop it. We gotta stop him. You gotta stop him on the board and tell him in, in no way you can't do it. And we're not gonna allow it to happen, right? We're not Zambians. We're trying to be good citizens. And trying to be is the only country, is the only Caribbean island where we've had, we've had. We've had almost two uprisings, right? We are, we, are, we are very spirited people, full of energy. Where is that energy? Where is that spirit that we have? It's like we seem, we seem lost. We don't know where the hell we are. We're going forward, we're going backward. We don't know where the hell we are. We need to stop him. March, do what they're gonna do. Stop to stop to stop going. Because all he's doing is selling everything out. He's selling your country out and everything like that. Everything like that. And, and if, you, if you have PNM members, you're supposed to stop this guy, man. And let him know in you know, uncertain terms, we're not going to accept that. Because it's supposed to be citizen first, patriot first, and then party after. But instead, what you have now is a whole bunch of fools who's, 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 who's agreeing with him, not understanding the dynamics behind it, not understanding the, 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 the finance, the financial ideas and the picture behind it. And this is what we have. And this is why I keep talking about the education system. All right, it's a screwed up education system we have. It's really, really screwed up. Because if we could accept things like this and don't break things down and don't have the ability to break things down and understand finances, 
from a from an intelligent level, we got a problem. I've had another cousin too. I have another cousin. He's a professor. He's a professor at UV for um, economics, Anthony Bertrand. And he and I used to go at it all the time when I see him. He's still around, right? All the time. Because, you know, he used to write all these people work on uh, these people on this and that and macroeconomics and microeconomics, whatever. Who the hell cares, right? I know, I know, I know about all that. I can, I can understand it, but not, I'm not all about all that. Me, it's about, it's about, I'm looking from an entrepreneurial point of view. What can we do in order to derive the, derive the best benefit with the, with the least amount of money, money that we have? That's how I look at things, right? And they don't understand how to monetize our money. When we're learning Jamaica money, we're learning Guyana money, we're learning everybody money, Grenada money, you come, hey, you, you, you want a loan, here, take it, right? At that time, we should have we should have understand how to market our money and make our money stronger. Instead, we we forget them on all those loans and we let it go, and that that weaken our dollar. And they don't understand the whole thing. So all these so-called people, the central bank, to me, they're a bunch of fools. If I were ever to get in power, I'll fire every single one of them, every one of them. Captain Cook, I fire every single one of them because they're a bunch of idiots, all of them. They don't know how to market our money. All, it, all they're doing is taking the, 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 the fund reserve, put some away, allegedly, and some they match it, they, they, they put it as they put it to, to do it out to the bigger companies. So you have Neil and Massey eating up millions of dollars of, of US dollars. At the same time, the small business, which is always the engine of any democratic economy and the middle class, you don't give them nothing. So you erode it. So there's no buffer between the between the, the, the upper class who's extremely rich and the poor people, the lower income, who don't have as much money. You have to have a buffer because the middle class pays the most taxes and the small businesses are the ones who can generate, from their standpoint, who can generate the, more, the, the most forex and circulate the, circulate the money the fastest. And they don't understand that. They don't understand that. So we have a bunch of UV so-called scholars economic advisor scholars who are a bunch of idiots right we don't have economists we don't we have mimic men and mimic women that's what we have so vs naipaul was right mimic men yes we are absolutely mimic men let's admit it going, going back to our constitution right our first president um edis clark but he's a, he was a joker all he did is copy and paste copy and paste the british colonial constitution to our constitution and, it's, and instead of saying uh, uh, um, England and our colonies or colony of England they put you out that's all they did right that's all they did nothing more than that same crap because because our education our education system is wrote and memorization and when that happens it doesn't teach you the idea how to how, how, how to think in a critical manner or to think dynamically to change ideas and concepts and not accept every idea and concept that you see. And this is what happened. And that is why you see everybody with consultant, who's a foreign news consultant, who's a foreign news consultant coming down here and giving stupid ideas. I told her one time, this guy I taught, this guy I taught um, a little bit of finance and some other stuff. He came down to Trinidad and made over half a million, nearly half a million dollars as a so-called consultant. And I taught him. And I taught him the ideas. And I taught him what needs to get done. And everything like that, and he came back to train that because he was pink skin. They went, they went, and it's, and 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 he sold a bag of bullshit, and they, and they, and they fell for it, right? He did ask me, um, you know, Charlie, can I come? In, can you come with me? Nah, I ain't coming with that crap. I left it alone, right? But this is what happened. What exports we have? What exports, Casimo? What exports do we have? Really, really, exports? Let me tell you something. Trying to make oil production is as old as the United States. It's as, as old as the United States, trying to make oil production. Many try to make geologists and everything like that. They're pretty good. I, I give them that. They're pretty good. And sometimes they go to different countries, Saudi Arabia and everything like that. Right? Do you know that our chief justice, Ivar Archie, do you know he was a chemical engineer? Do you know he went to Saudi Arabia and that's where he got kidnapped? Right? Because he should work for a Saudi Arabian oil company. And that's why he tried to change from, from, um, from engineering to law. But anyway, that's another story by itself. Right? Because him, I'm, him, I'm not happy about neither. But anyhow, yeah, all the two big ones. Yep, tell like it is. I don't play. 
I have no time to lie. I have no time to, to play games with them. I have no time, I have no time to play clannish with nobody. I'm talking to them straight as it is. Anyhow, so we have a lot of experts, but the problem is with a lot of experts is a lot of them leave the country, the good ones, leave the country and they go to Texas and other countries, Alaska and everything like that in order to, to plan their trade. The mediocre, mediocre ones stay back and then they fall under the whole guise of the, the theft, the corruption and everything like that. So they don't care anymore. All they want is make a salary and, and that's what happened. Right? Yeah, civil engineer. Thank you. So this is part of our issue that we have, right? We don't have people who can say, you know what? Let's create a vision. These are our vision. This is where we, we want to go forward. Here's our trajectory. This is how we're going to create our trajectory. And we're going to stack ourselves up against international against everyone. And we're going to punch above our weight. But they, don't have, they never have that in mind because they never understood civics. And civics is important for all of us to understand who we are as a person, as a national person. So because they never had civics, they don't care. I learned about love of country from, from being in the cadet force. That's how I learned. And that's how I can never turn my back on my, on my own country. That's part of my reason. But they never learned that. So they don't care. It doesn't matter to them. Steal as much as you want. This is what happened. We do not have real true experts and everything like that. All we have is a bunch of regurgitators. And this is what they're doing. And this is why, this is why right now we can allow people like Anthony Chantak, right? Was the director of World GTL and he's now the director of Petrotrain. And now he, 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 he's coming for the second go around of closing Petrotrain after, after the, these bastards put $3 billion of, of debt onto Petrotrain because of this failed project that these bastards implemented. Now they come for a second go around. And David Small and Robert Riley, director Massey, same old bastard, same old crap. And Miss Allison Lewis, same failed Port Authority board. That give us that 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 that, that give us all these all these failed boats and 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 see and see which get destroyed and they put her there. This is the kind of nastiness that goes on. So anyhow, um, I've got a couple of Lashley report. In the way, I'm gonna put more of it out in open space about Lashley Lashley report. The Lashley report came after the Simpson report, and none required closure of Petro Trade. None. None. So who's lying? So why do, why would we still have it Espany? Me, if I was in Trinidad, I'll go to Espany home and, and Espany home, right, right now, and I'll stop in front of his house and I'll protest in front of his house to let you know you got personal, I got personal with you. Because because all you guys are thieves and liars. You're all bastards. You think you you guys decided to close it, close it down because you all you all want to benefit from it. But guess what? Right? If you say you never benefit from it, resign. Resign off the board, get out of the board, and let them do it over again. But nobody sends a signal to them because we want to be stupid and act stupid. And that's part of our issue. And when we act stupid and be stupid, then they'll treat us as stupid. And that's our problem. That's our problem we face right now. So anyhow, um, that's what I want to put out there about the border directors. And what I'm going to later, later tonight, I'm going to put all the border directors for the train. And I'm going to show the connection between them and the, and the $3 billion in debt that they loaded on, onto Petro Train to make it $12 billion. These bastards. And they, went, they came back for a second go around. This is a second go around chance, man. Man, $3 billion, man, that's, that's, that's nothing now. That's nothing. I want, I, want, I want the whole hog. And that's what these bastards are doing. That's why they have it there. That's why, that's why the government refused to negotiate with the bond holders, even though the bond holders. Holder, I, I want to negotiate. They, they refused to do it, right? And they could have done it because it wasn't a sovereign bond. It was not a sovereign bond. It was a corporate bond tied into implied support from the government, right? So you, so all the devastation, all at nine point seven five percent, ridiculous. At, at a good credit rating, this is what these bastards they have, have been doing: stealing, 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 stealing. When are we gonna? When are, when are we gonna stop them? When are we gonna stop them? When are we gonna are we gonna let them keep on stealing or are we gonna stop them? This is my this is what I'm talking about. Is it that you're a citizen or you're being a damn patriot? If you're a patriot, yeah, that is a patriot is an actionable citizen. That's what a patriot is. An actionable citizen. That means with action, right? You put forward, you, you do what you're gonna do to, to stop things what you consider abuses, right? As being as being a citizen. 
Or you want to be passive and then be a citizen and let anything happen to you. And then when the price of oil goes up, because we don't refine our oil anymore, and the price of oil goes up, and everything goes up, everything goes up, the price of food goes up, and everything like that. When our money become 100 to 1, and become like 12 people, and everything like that, all the oil will be fussing and run into the nearest US and Canadian embassy to try to, 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 try to come up. By that time, the doors will close on you. Is that what you want? Or you want to build a better country? Nothing's wrong with the country itself. Trinidad and Tobago is a very beautiful country, exceptionally beautiful, right? We have so many assets. It's not the, it's not the country, it's the damn freaking people. That's the damn problem. The people, most of the damn people, most of them who voted in executioners, who will come in and steal the money. That's what we, we voted in, executioners. Thank, thank you, thank you. Nah, nah God said, I'm just, I'm, just, I'm just a simple person. Right? I love every citizen of Trinidad and Tobago. Believe me. Believe you me. I don't see no difference between, between, between any one of us and everything like that. Right? We are who we are. And all of us punch above our weight. Every single one of us. When we're out here, we, we do. And, and, and as a people, we are highly creative people. We have, we have never had a government that harnessed our creativity. Never have a government that did it. Never did it. We never had a government that understand that our human resources and how we can how we can project our human resources and how we can make a better environment for us. Instead, what they have done is created cults and and, and created this prejudicial voting. Well, I'm a I'm a person of Trini Indo heritage, so therefore uh, I vote one way, and I'm a I'm a person of Tobago Afro Tobago heritage, so I'm gonna vote another way, and not understanding that. We're supposed to have a national heritage, which is which is which make us who we are as a, a citizen of Trinidad and Tobago. The, the passport did not say Trinidad. The passport didn't say Tobago. See, the passport said Trinidad and Tobago. So that means we're supposed to have one national identity, and that's it. Nothing wrong with celebrating it with your heritage of where you came from and your and, and everything. Nothing's wrong with that. I have nothing against that. My issue is. We're not having a forward, not, not a national her heritage, one identity to who we are. And all we did, all we did is to come and use the stupid ways because my name, because my last name is, is, is Singh. I shouldn't listen to him because he's a, he's a, he's a, he's a Indian. No, he's not Indian. He's a trying to be, he's a, he's a, he's a, he's a trying to be a citizen. Right? This is what happened. So, he, so we put our racial thing first and then put our citizenship after. Which is supposed to be the other way around, or citizenship first, and then we can put our racial identity or whatever we want to be after the fact. That's part of that's part of our issue. Right? And, we, and all we trying to and all I'm trying to say is one national identity for who we are. And I appreciate our diversity of who we are because it makes us stronger. It makes us stronger. So if people from Central, their ideas are great. If people from, from the Northeast Trinidad, their ideas are great. If people from Tobago, their ideas are great. People from South, their ideas are great, right? This is what this is what we, we this is what we're supposed to be doing. Collect all our ideas together and we, with one cohesive voice move forward. But instead, we we want to be, they play the British divide and conquer. And I must listen to you, and because I think you're smarter than me, or you, or you think because I'm a um, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a African extract, right? Uh, so I should be I, maybe I'll go out, maybe I'll go out and steal at the store. This is the kind of stupidness we have. I we need to get over it. I we need to understand that we share a rock. We all share two rocks together, mixed world republic, and and that's who we are. Instead of trying to be good, and we should think like that, and get the ideas and, and stop the fooling around and start wasting our energy and time on foolishness and focus on what we need to do, not to move ourselves forward. Right? You can have a beautiful country, and next thing you know, to be able to Sanders, and all of a sudden Sanders control everything because Sanders will tell the the, the THA what to do, what not to do, and tell the government what to do, what not to do, right? All of a sudden, the Chinese own, own our port. So now, the Chinese, the Chinese start to control our economy now. And that's how they do it. Sneakily, that's how the Chinese do it. If we as citizens don't stand up, it's all right. For a small country, we have so many assets. So many assets. It's a shame. It's a damn shame. We have oil. We have gas. We have a little bit of bauxite. We have, um, besides that, we also have the Nariva Swamp, the Scarlet Ibis, 
We have also the Issa Wright uh, Book Sanctuary, which we never take, take advantage of. Um, in Tobago, we have, we, have, we have beaches. Besides that, there's also natural gas off of Tobago too. Besides that, the largest, the, the largest living green coral, coral is in, in the world is in Tobago. We don't advertise that. The largest living green coral in the world is in Tobago. We're supposed to have divers coming here by the thousands. And divers stay an average of two to three weeks. And they like to stay in local guest houses or stay people. In a much, in a much raw foreign exchange cash that will trickle down to the people and trickle down to our suppliers and trickle down to our, to our country. Could you imagine me bringing in just by myself? Let's have a house in Tobago. And I bought four divers, 10 divers. And they're and they paying $3,000 each to stay for the month. Right? That's 12,000 US. But I have to pay for food, I have to pay for supplies. So I have to go to the local supermarket and I have to use that money to pay for it. The local supermarket now have to pay the supply and churn that. So they, so they need US cash to do it. So they pay this US, they, they pay the supplier the US cash in Trinidad. And then it's, the, the, the supplier in Trinidad will take, he need US cash to bring more imported goods because he need it. Or maybe maybe a small business that using imported raw materials to make it to, to make his good to make his goods. So he has a US cash to do it. So you see how everything trickle up. But these fools don't want that because Sanders, what Sanders have been doing is been stealing money. Not only sticking money, Sanders have also been holding back money from governments. And this, and this fool will well, not see that because he's, a free, he's an agent for Sanders. If you're an agent for Sanders, resign as prime minister and become a full agent and, tell him, and let everybody know and be done with the nonsense. But they don't want everything they're doing. And you all not pay attention. Everything that they're doing is to avoid Forex from trickling down to the local economy. That's all they're doing. Every single plan they're doing. Think about it. Think exactly what I'm telling you all. Every single plan that they're doing is to avoid the Forex from trickling down and circulating in the local economy. Every single thing they're doing. So by so by close down Petrotrain, now we don't have we don't have we don't have the larger source of foreign influx into the government. We don't have that no more. Right? Now, where are we gonna get the forex from? You tell me. The lack of forex for our central bank, that means that the amount of money that the central bank has as forex to hedge against our dollar is not enough to stabilize our dollar. So what's going to happen is that our dollar will, have, will go up and drop will go up. It has to be, it has to be their value. They can never hold the $6 per US because there's not enough US to support it. So what happens is that it goes up to $9, $10. So they'll, they'll, they'll start to creep it. They'll start to creep it so you won't feel the effects. From $6.75 to $7.10, from $7.10 to $8.20, to from $8.20 to $8.95, from $8.95 to $9. You see what I'm talking about? And it won't feel the effects. So they have, they have to creep it out. Creep it up, and that's what they're gonna do. So sooner or later, it's twelve dollars to one, because you don't have any, in, enough forex to support your local dollar to give it the strength, and that's what they do by by wiping out petrol train. It's better for them because now over one petrol train now has a lot, has a lot of forex now, because they they do now to refine it, refine it. So they have a lot of forex now, and now they can dictate to you prices as as need be. Now, you can no longer go to Amazon or any foreign company and buy goods anymore because our dollar, the price of our dollar is, 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 is so high, the cost of our dollar is, has been devalued so much that the price of the good, is, 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 the price of the good is, is out of reach. At the same time, it's not enough money circulating in the local economy. So therefore, we get our dollar shortage. And besides that, what's going to happen now, you have to go to their stores in order to buy their stuff. So now you have a full encircling of the wagon. So all they do is they have like tentacles. They have every tentacle into you and there's nothing you can do about it except, except, except accept it for what it is. So there's no more innovation. There's no more innovation. There's no more exports. There's, no, there, there's nothing except for what they tell you. That's the plan. And what you don't give a shit because they hate you with a passion. They hate you with a passion. That's why they hate you. They don't like you. If he, if he like it, I love himself, he will be doing what he's doing right now. So since in the garden people to come to Black Sea World, 
he's gonna he's gonna show you who's gonna be black here. That's how he is. It's not about them, about them as a race, it's about him. It's all about him, he himself, and how he think about himself, and, and he don't give a crap about the country. This is the same guy who was a housing minister and he's a geologist at number four lines. And what's the name of La La Altura, La 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 Alturas, that housing complex, right? Was built on a fault line. And you was a minister of housing at the time. And you built a lot of the build a, a complex on a fault line. This is what I'm talking about. This is the kind of stupidity I'm talking about. Plain old stupidity. And he allowed that to happen. And that's why we're gonna start stand up him and jam him because he's an idiot. That's why I don't call him a doctor nothing. Right? I come Dr. Kaka. That's what I call him. Dr. Sello, Dr. Kaka. Right? Dr. Mugabe. If you, you, want, you want a name, Dr. Mugabe. Because that's what he think. He think just like that, that Zambian president who have, sold, who have lost everything to the damn Chinese. He's going to do the same crap to us. And if we don't start up to that fool and let him on no certain terms that we're not going to allow it, right? They'll keep on raping us over and over and over and over again. Right? And I keep telling you all, why, why don't you ask Rowling why he couldn't put up, why he didn't he couldn't have a seat in Tobago and he ended up with a seat in Trinidad? Why don't you all ask him that question? I keep asking the same question over and over again. Why is it that Rowling could get a seat in Trinidad, could have a seat in Trinidad to represent a seat, a seat in Trinidad, but yet a Trinidad person can't get a seat in Tobago? I want to find out, find out myself, right? We need to ask that question because what they did, they made a seat specially for him. Because Rowling had to run with his tail between his legs from Tobago at the time. For a lot of reasons, not only political, but for a lot of reasons. Right? He went to Trinidad. And what did Trinidad PNM did? Instead of, instead of looking at what he did in Tobago and saying, you know, it's later for you, what he did, they went and carved out a space for him in Trinidad for him. And now, now we have an arrogant bastard right now that you have to deal with. Right? And you can't really blame Tobago, really. You gotta blame Trinidad because you all voted for him. And you and really represented that district in Trinidad. Now we see the manifestation of who he is and the kind of person he is now. Every single thing he does, every single thing he does, right? Same thing with um, Elias. He bought Elias in for, the, for the telephone company. They bought a Neil Massey company for $250 million. This is a kind of bull crap. Bull crap. That, 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 that's not advancing the te telecommunications. In charge of the bureau. This, this, this is what happened. Because they start thinking for ourselves. You've got to understand all our assets belong to us, not to them. I don't care what the old OWTU plan is. It doesn't matter because the old Casimir, that's a, that's a story for another time. Trust me. Trust me, Casimir. That's a story for another time. What did you need to be able? Ha, 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 Lord. Huh. I won't, let me not get into that right, not, not right now. I'll, I'll be distracted and then I, I'll get more angry. Right? But this is what we're talking about, right? This is the kind of foolishness that, that, that is happening in our country. I we need to stop him. Stop this fool from wrecking our country and having, and having the so-called oligarchy, oligarchy come and encircle us and steal everything we have until we have nothing. And it goes back to our education system. Road education has never produced innovation. Remember this. Wrote, wrote memorization education has never produced innovation. It has never produced innovation. Look all these island scholars and everything like that who went and who, and, and who came first for the, for, for the whole of trying to make us stuff. Where are they now? Where are they now? Has any of them come back and say, you know what? Let me come back and form a company. Let me come back. Let me come back and do, and do research. Or let me come back and, and, form, and create this new patent. That's gonna shock the world. They have never ever done it. None of them. Some of them end up being research scientists, some end up working with large companies, and they become and they become insecure. I mean, uh, I mean, like out, out there, nothing nothing is happening. Think about that. Think about that. And it's all, like I said, it's all about how you think. And why you think and your thoughts and your ideas and your vision and everything. It's all about that. And when you have people. We have people who have been dumb dumb for so long, after a while they start a lack vision. And when they start a lack vision, they don't know how to, how to think themselves out of, of issues and think that the person because they were doctorate, you must you must look up to them and, and worship them. 
And it's quite the opposite because many times, many times, the problem is they're so cuddled in this, in, in, in the environment, or in, so in the intellectual environment, what happens is that they don't have no clue what it, what it takes to go on the ground and make things happen. They don't have a clue. And that's part of the issues. Issue. So they could never innovate and innovate nothing. What are they going to innovate? Innovate and do what? Innovate and do what? All of them talk about intellect, what intellect they have. I can, I can read something, a thousand pages sometimes, and then over time, I can sit back to you word for word if I choose to. But do I understand what it means? No. I don't understand what the hell it means because I want to pretend to digest it and, and, and put information down. Because I have to rush and do my exams and whatever it takes to cram. And when I cram and I pass and stuff like that, then, I, then I'm comfortable. And that's all I know all there is to it. But there's no innovation. And that's part of, part of the issue. We never dumb 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 down education. You don't get you don't get innovation. And we had so many assets to innovate on and spin off on. We have so many assets. And yet, yet we can't we can't we seem incapable of doing that. Because we were dumb down education. So the first thing we're gonna do is open our citizens' eyes and start to and start to educate them about alternatives and stop letting someone with a doctor title behind their name, right, be a godsend and and, and, and the beginning and end of everything. Stop that crap, that stupid thinking. Look at every single innovation in in the world. Most of the innovation came from California. California is the most innovative state in, in the state of the Union, in the United States. And most of the people who do, who do the innovation are not doctorates. Some of them come out of high school. Facebook is one. Facebook, Facebook is one. Facebook is, is on the other side, the Eastern Seaboard. Facebook is one, right? He didn't, he, he didn't, get, he didn't get his degree. He didn't finish college, right? But here's Facebook that we're communicating on, right? A lot of social media platforms. Right, it's not people who have doctorates, it's people who decide they see a need and fill a need, and they have the vision and the, and, and the confidence to move forward and say, You know what, let's work on this idea and expand it. And this is what happened, and of course, access to finance, which is important. But this is what they did. But what do we have in trying to make? What, what, what vision do we really have? Potholes is that what it is? Right, this is what happened. And then we come and say, look at them, look at them, because he's not, he not a doctor. I never, I, he not, he not, he not, he's not a doctor, so he's stupid. Look, and this is our mindset. And we got to get it from that kind of stupid mindset. Because the people on the ground see things and see ideas, and they see things around them, and knowing that, that they can change things a little bit in order to impact, in order to impact their surroundings, or impact how they do business, or impact how we, how, how, how we do things. Those are the people you have to respect. And I see it a lot when I go to Trinidad and Tobago. I see a lot of local entrepreneurs or local people doing things, but they don't get the support from the government because the government do not want to support them. Because it, they think that if they, keep them if they keep them dependent, you can control them. If they, keep them. if they become independent, they can't control them. And that's what we have in our country right now. You're a bunch of idiots. You're a bunch of idiots because who are insecure. And they do not want no one to challenge them. And that's and the people who are insecure will will always vote in insecure politicians who looks who look like them because they feel more comfortable about that. So they vote them in. And this is what we get. So the people who the people who want to innovate and want to move forward can't move forward because most of the population are dumb dumb and don't understand that every time you, 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 you bring these bastards into power, all they're doing is for themselves. And they, and they don't care if they screw you or not. That's all they care about, right? They, they don't care about you. All they care about is how they could screw you over and how much, they, how much money they could make because they have a short-term vision in front of them. Because they can leave and there's no repercussion for stealing money. There's no repercussion for that. Everything is broken. So who the hell cares? And we have to start change that thinking. That's what it is, right? And I'll just tell you something briefly. Um, when I was younger, not now, when I was younger, I used to work for a telecommunications company. I moved up about mm, six places. They didn't really want to hire me at the time because they, they want to hire an accountant. 
when I was an accountant, I was still in college. I was doing engineering in college. But they decided to hire me because when, I, when they did the aptitude test, you know, tra -la -la, tra -la -la, tra -la, right? So I passed it. So they moved me from, I, I became from a clerk in 12 months, I became a manager for one of the telecommunications division, actually for the whole, for the whole of the Eastern Seaboard. And I went through a lot of crap because I was the youngest manager at the time, and I was the only and I was the only minority manager at the time. And I went through all sort of crap because they were so shocked that I moved up six places up the ranks in about in a one year. So I used to have, used to have like the news bull crap, which I didn't care about. They didn't, didn't bother me. And I did all kind of crap, but it never worked. They tried to sabotage me, it didn't work. But anyhow, I survived all that. I started to change things around so the company could show more profit. And I work on a switching, on a switching system for them. At the same time, even though I, knew, I thought I knew what I knew, at the same time, I didn't understand the, the true economics of your own self-worth. I didn't understand at the time. I think I was like 22, 23 at the time. So I didn't understand the whole, my, my, my own, my own self-worth. Even though I thought I was self-aware, but I really, were, but, in, but in hindsight, I realized I wasn't self-aware. I was high functioning, but I wasn't self-aware. So they took my, my patent, they took it as their own, painted, and all I got out of the deal was $5,000 as a bonus check and nothing else. And if I knew what I knew now, out of that innovation, that, that, that uh, innovation I did, that idea I did, I'd have kept it myself. And then I spun it out of me, I made a whole bunch of money. But I didn't understand my own self-worth. So that was my issue. But you know, over time, of course, I, I know things now, I see things now, you know, age being reason, and because you're exposed to so many things, you see things in a different light. And this is what happened, you know? So we have to, it's about our own value, about our own self-value, our own value about ourselves. That's what's the most important thing. And that's what I've been talking about over and over again, how we value ourselves. And, you know, like I said, going back to our education, going back to our intelligence, so it's financial knowledge. Financial knowledge means that up for a hundred thousand dollar investment, you might make five hundred dollars, or maybe a thousand dollars if you're so lucky. Financial intelligence means, or for that hundred thousand dollars, I would make a million dollars off of that in six months, because I know the financial systems, I know how to break it down, I know where to put my money, how to put my money, how to time my money, so so my money works for me, not me working for the money. And that's the difference. And our schools don't teach us how to do that. All they teach us is digest information and don't teach us how to take that information, right? And manipulate that information. And how to take that information, squeeze that damn information, right? Break it apart, break it down into the basic building blocks and build it, block, build it, build it back to your own liking, right? And to your own benefit. They don't teach us that. All they teach us is, you know, do simple things, do this here, do that there and follow you and follow that rule. No, no, you have to learn to think. And that's what we, we, we're not taught to think. We are taught to absorb and regurgitate, right? Like lemons, and, we got, and that got to stop. Anyhow, I have more information, but not right now um, on the last report. I'll, I'll put more posts out and everything like that, and we'll take it from there. But like I said, we got to stop this man. This is ridiculous. All this stuff is ridiculous. Start, to think for, th start thinking for yourself. Because you have children, you may have grandchildren, you have relatives, you have family, and everything like that, and you, and you have to ensure their future too. If you don't want to ensure your future, that's all well and good, and everything like that, but you have to ensure your future, their future too. So start to think about how we can do things to change, to change what's going on, change your metric, change, what, change what, how we see things, how we view things. And I always end up, end up telling everyone, love yourself, right? Going through this earth is a one is a is a one pass deal. You ain't got no second time go around. So that is why it's important for you to stand up for your rights, stand up, stand up to anything and everything that, that affects you. And if it's something that affects you in the future, 
right? And deal with it now. Don't stick it in the sun. Enjoy you for who you are. You're here on this earth for a mission. Please complete your mission. All right? Have a good, have a good evening for, for you all. You all take care. Share this video well, um, at the end. All right. More to come later on. Take care. Have a good evening. Uh, love you folks. You all are the best. And um, just keep being you. Bye-bye.